One year. One year since I lost my idol. Before this video starts, I do want to mention Peyton Chester, Sarah Chester, Alisa Altobelli, Carrie Altobelli, John Altobelli, Christina Mauser, Eva Sabayan, the young queen Gigi Bryant, and Kobe Bryant. My prayers are with your families always as they continue to live your legacy here on the planet Earth. I was twisting and turning how I was going to create a video to pay tribute to the man that shaped my life, to the man that helped me become who I am today, to the man that showed me what basketball is. I don't have idols aside from my parents, but Kobe Bryant is my only idol. And uh, I figured out the ultimate way to pay tribute to him was by showing the world, showing younger kids how he impacted me with his approach to everything, with his approach to life, with his approach to his family, with his approach to basketball, with his approach to everything. And I hope all of these lessons help you push forward to wake up that inner mamba mentality in you. And uh, the, these couple minutes are just me creating a piece of content that I hope withstands time and that I can look back to when I'm older and uh, pay tribute to the man that made it all possible. So Kobe, thank you and uh, mamba forever. Well, I mean, because I think the greatest fear that we face is ourselves, actually. It's not anything that's external or anything that's superficial. I think the greatest fear you face is yourself I mean, because, you know, we all have dreams and, and it's very scary sometimes to accept the dream that you have. And it's scarier still to say, okay, I want that. Mm -hmm. It's scary because you're afraid that if you put your heart and soul into it and you fail, then how are you going to feel about yourself? Right? So being fearless means putting yourself out there and going for it, no matter what, go for it. Not for anybody else, um, but for yourself. I take you to this scene, 20 seconds left to go. You're down by one. You want the ball. You want to take the last shot. Absolutely. I'm not afraid to fail and I, I just love it. It's, it's, it's just an adrenaline rush. Everybody in the crowd stands up and everybody's waiting to see if you're going to make the shot, if you're going to lose the game, or you're going to win the game. It's, it's just an unbelievable rush. <laughs> Teams, was people double teaming you doing pickup? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And what you what you what do you think about? like Say you got to send another one. <laughs> straight up. Yeah, yeah, I said another one, man. <laughs> straight up, straight yeah. the fuck up. So, who, who beat you in one-on-one -on -one if it ever happened in practice? <laughs> no one. All right, you once said, if you see me in the fight with the bear, pray for the bear. Right. Is that still going to be true when you come back? Yeah, bear's having a hard time. I'm, I'm, I'm beating the bear pretty good right now. Be yourself. That's it. Be you. Be you. There's no gimmick. There's no. You don't have to contrive anything. Who are you? Where are you today? What is your story? Where does that come from? Right? And then all you're doing is not communicating the story to the public. This lesson is pretty much what I'm going through right now. You know what I mean? I let life and let my fear of myself, uh, fearing of, of overcoming the obstacles that life has thrown at me, uh, let me get fat and uh, let me get in situations that. I don't particularly want to be in. So this lesson is very important because it allows you to, to look in the mirror and uh, realize that it's not about the competition out there. It's not about what they say or they don't say, what your family members say, what your loved ones say. It's about what you want to do and go for it. Go all out and don't fear failure because it's just a part of life. There's no really losing. It's just about learning. And uh, it's something that doing this video made me look in the mirror again. And it's like, oh, I forgot that. And uh, big things are going to come exactly because of this lesson. So your biggest fear is yourself. And uh, that's something that the Mamba preached a lot. And uh, it's something that I'm relating to right now more than anything. But yeah. I want more. <laughs> I want more. I want to learn more. Where can I learn more? <laughs> Where can I look? You know, I want more. I want to learn this thing some more. There's got to be another level. You know? It's the curiosity. I think the curiosity is the most important thing. I mean, it's it's 
you know, it's, it sounds really weird to say, but you mean know, like leadership lessons. You know, I learned leadership lessons just from walking in the park and just observing nature and the sun's relationship with nature and relationship with the moon and the sun understanding when to be present and when to go away, right? Because as a teammate, it was like, dude, the sun's out all damn long. You're going to sunburn a hell of a lot of people, right? So if I'm playing this game and I'm on top of my guys for 48 minutes, dude, you're going to sunburn every single teammate there, right? right? So there's certain times where it's important for the sun to be present. There's other times it needs to go away. Right, and, um, but they're, they're life lessons that surround us at all times, and uh, I've, I've always been extremely, extremely curious about those things. What is this Kobe process? You'll pick up the phone, you'll call people who are leaders in industry, and you just pick their brain? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's exact. I mean, it's, it, you know, I just cold call people. Absolutely, I just cold call people and just pick their brain about stuff. And you know, I'm, I'm, some of the questions that I ask will, will seem really, really simple and stupid, quite honestly. For them, but if I don't know, you know, I don't know. I have to ask, and so I'll just do that. I'll just ask questions, and I want to learn more about how they build their business, or how they run their companies, and you know, how do they see the world. And You'd never call them. No, I, don't, no. I, I, I cold call people all the time. If I'm curious about something, I want to learn something. I'll call and I'll ask. You know. How serious did you take the All Star Game? Well, extremely serious. I mean, it's it's uh, you know, it was a great opportunity for me to learn. You know, I, I remember my last All Star Game. Uh, we we're in the locker room in Popovich before the game has a brilliant idea of letting each player diagram plays in a timeout, right? And all the guys are like, oh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, great, 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 great. And I'm sitting there like, we're out of the play. We ain't making no playoffs at that point. It's my last year, right? So I really don't even, you know. So I said, you know, Pop, if I was competing with you guys for the playoffs, um, I'd tell you that that's a horrible idea. And I'm not doing that at all. I want to see you draw every play and every single time out because I want to see what you run. Absolutely. As opposed to you seeing what I'm thinking in my head and <laughs> yes, what I'm is. drawing up, you know, that's not happening. And he just started laughing. That's awesome. Start laughing. He gets it. Now, now this one, this one is one of the most impactful ones as far as like changing your life if you do it right. Uh, learn more and uh, have extreme attention to detail. As you guys heard, Kobe, he used to just call people, bro, like experts at their craft and how do you do this? How do you do that? And uh, that curiosity is pretty much what sparked his greatness because it wasn't just about doing a simple move. It just wasn't about the jab step. It was about the angle of the jab step, where your shoulders should be when you're doing the jab step, how the ball is moving when you're doing the jab step. And uh, all those little details, um, you know what I'm saying? They, they create perfection, basically. Now, the dope thing is he learned from everybody. He always talked about how he learned how to back down and use his booty, <laughs> like uh, Oscar Robertson learned his pull-up jumper from Jerry West, uh, finishing around the rim like Elgin Baylor. Everything, footwork and positioning and everything to learn from MJ. Even in the All-Star game, he was like 19 years old. He was asking MJ uh, about the feet on the fadeaway, like where, how, you know, what I'm saying how should he feel the defense out, and uh, that curiosity and that wanting to learn more and more and more is what ultimately made him the best in the world made him a five-time champion in seven finals in 10 years um the best at his craft because you need to want to learn more and not only from one person but start picking everybody's brain because you can get some positivity something good from everybody else so that's something that i started to apply and that's something that uh i try to do man i try to ask a lot of people even though it sounds annoying and everything i just want to learn how you got there you know what i mean and uh, yeah, man, just keep learning. He was, uh, you know, a great uh, teacher and mentor for me. Um, but Michael was very tactical and very efficient you know, with his movements. There was no wasted space. There weren't any wasted dribbles. I mean, he was very surgical with how he approached the game. You can see it. I mean, he made the game look so easy. It was very difficult to do. Is he? Does he? Does he give you advice? Yeah, he does actually. Yeah. Good advice. Great advice. I mean, I, I'll never, I'll never ever, well, I'll never ever ever um, say that. I mean, I, him and Magic and those guys, and you know, Michael in particular, is really giving me phenomenal advice in how to take a team, uh, particularly with the personalities that <laughs> that we have, and how to better communicate with your teammates, how to better elevate your teammates. What player in your career did you learn the most from? 
Oh, Michael. Michael. For sure. Even though you never played together. For sure. Wow. Um, you know, Michael Jordan for me was always, you know, the person that inspired me the most. And, um, you know, how he carried himself, how he handled things, and um, how he uh, carried the athlete, um, the black athlete, not just in the United States of America, but became a global phenomenon and saying, okay, a black athlete can reach the masses and inspire the masses on a global scale. Now, this lesson is interesting because it's exactly what this video is about. Kobe Bryant is my mentor, you know, and uh, it's, it's so important, bro. It's, for example, with, with, with Kobe, everybody wanted to be Mike. LeBron wanted to be Mike, Vince Carter wanted to be Mike, Tracy McGrady wanted to be Mike, Grant Hill wanted to be Mike, Penny Hardaway wanted to be Mike, Allen Iverson, like Paul Pierce, Ray Allen, um, all of these guys wanted to be Michael Jordan. And uh, only one got close, only one paid enough attention to detail to mimic Mike, Mike's game to perfection. Now, Kobe didn't have the athletic ability that Mike did, didn't have the first step, didn't have the strength that Mike did. So he self-assessed and he mastered his craft even more. If you if you go pound for pound on skill set, on skill set only, Kobe has better handles, Kobe shoots better, has better footwork, uh, better touch with his left hand around the rim. And all of that comes from self-assess. If I wanna be Mike and I don't have his athletic ability, what else can I develop to try to do everything I can to be like Mike, you know? He, he, he loved Magic Johnson growing up, but at some point he realized he wasn't going to be a 6'9 point guard. So that's a self assess coming in. And he found his mentor that was exactly where he wanted to be. And he just mimicked what he did. And it's something that I'm starting to apply here. And uh, really getting out of my own comfort zone and uh, activating that, that Mamba mode this year. And it's super important to do so because if you don't, you're just going to live with regret, regret the, the rest of your life. And I don't want to live that way, man. So find that mentor and just apply everything that they do, man. You no, know, it's it's funny. Like it's to me, the mentality is a really simple one in, in the sense that the confidence comes from preparation. You know, so when the game's on the line, I'm not asking myself to do something that I haven't done thousands of times before, right? So when I prepare, I know what I'm capable of doing. I know what I'm comfortable doing, and I know what I'm not comfortable doing. You know, right? And so in those moments, if it looks like I'm ice cold or not nervous, it's because I've done it thousands of times before. So it's one more time. Uh, Michael's a great basketball player, but I'm Kobe Bryant. The most important thing, uh, I think, for players that come after me is to understand that things, these things are possible, you know, like you don't want to ever limit your imagination or limit what's possible because people may think you're crazy, right? But if us as athletes don't think that it's possible to do these things, how in the world can we inspire people? Do you remember what you told me one day in the forum when I first met you? You said you were going to be the finish it for me. What, the greatest player of all time? Yes. You remember you told me that? No, but that sounds that sounds something. No, that sounds like that. something that I would say. <laughs> you, you, actually, you actually said that, and then you actually said I'm gonna be the Will Smith of the NBA. This is what you oh, really? Here, and I was like, all right, <laughs> okay, Will, Will Smith. Whatever you say. Yeah, times have changed. <laughs> uh, yeah, now you know I've always had ambition. I felt like I was having a special night when Lamar kept reminding me that I was having a special night in every time out. <laughs> he he come to me and said, "You can't get 50." And the next time I go, he just looks at me and goes. You can't get 60. <laughs> Kobe goes straight to the dribble. Kobe Bryant, he's got 61 points. And then by the last time he says, we're going to get 80 then. <laughs> For three again, yes! <laughs> well, there's 70. That wasn't something that was out of the realm of possibility in my mind uh, because of the amount of work that I put in. I mean, that summer, I really, I put a lot of time in the gym. I put a lot of time on the track. I could run all day and run at a high speed all day long. And I'd taken so many shots. I mean, I, my shot felt sharp. Kobe's got the Laker record. <laughs> 72. 
So it's like if I, my foot stays on the gas, there could be games where I do have 80 points. I think it probably sank, sank in for me after the game, and Bishaw just came up to me and just looked at me and said, man, you are crazy. <laughs> he said, you told me the time comes, you'll be able to do it. And I thought you lost your mind. And, man, I can't say that you're that crazy anymore. <laughs> Confidence comes from preparation. I've never felt this more real in my life because since I got fat, and since I let the injuries get the best of me, I lost all my confidence. You know what I'm saying? Before I felt like like Captain America, like Iron Man, indestructible. You know? And it I felt that way because I used to put so much work in. Nobody could tell me nothing. Nothing was impossible. Nothing was out of reach. So when you see Kobe talk about why he doesn't fear a moment, why he doesn't fear taking a shot, it's because he's done it thousands and thousands and thousands of times. So it doesn't matter who's in front of him. He's done that exact move at that exact spot millions of times. So how is he ever going to doubt himself? And he brought that confidence everywhere else. And insecure people might call it cocky. Um, I don't think it's cocky. I just think you put so much time into something, so much attention to detail, so many hours, so much sacrificing from your family, from your loved ones, um, that... Man, you just feel like nothing is really impossible. It's like when people were asked, were, were angry that he said he's the greatest of all time when asked to rank him, LeBron, and Mike. That's what he's supposed to say. You know what I mean? Like eight hours a day working in the gym. What else is he going to say? You know, that's disrespectful to the work that he put in. So um, if you don't believe in yourself, if you don't have the confidence in yourself, put that work in, man. You know, about six months of constantly putting that work in, you're going to feel good about yourself. You're going to look at yourself in a different view, different mirror. And, uh, man, that's, that's just what it is, man. Just put that work in. You, because you at one time maybe felt like people said, oh, you only win because Shaq is your teammate. And then that drove now, you, know, you to... I never, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I never cared about when other people said that. It never bothered me that people said, well, you only win championships because you're playing with Shaq. It bothered me when he said it. You understand? So when he said it, I said, okay, you know what? That's it. Because you know what time it is. After we split apart, were you trying to get more, more championships than me? Oh, absolutely. You were? Absolutely. And I knew you were going to get one. I knew you were going to get one. Because of the energy, you know, going into Miami and D-Wade and everything that was there, I knew you were going to get that one. So I knew I had to get at least two or three. I wanted you to get that, because I needed that. I wanted that. Like, I wanted people to say, see, see, this is what they're missing here. This is what they gave up for, right? Kobe should have been the one to go. Now he's in Miami, he's winning. I, I, like, I needed that, I wanted that. I wanted everybody to hate me. I wanted to fuel off of that and just come back with so much anger and so much vengeance. So I wanted that. So when you won, um, right after you won, I went out to the track and I ran. I did my conditioning, I did my drills, I woke up the next morning, I hit my weights, I did my thousand shots, I did everything humanly possible to get myself ready. But I, I was, I needed it. I was like, all right, yeah, good. Actually, after I got drafted, um, you, know, you have to go in, you have to do your calls. Mm -hmm. you know, so I go in and I do a call and I speak to a representative uh, from the organization at the time. Mm -hmm. And they said, you know, they told me that, you know, they were looking to move me because they really didn't have any use or need for me. Mm -hmm. I said, they didn't have any use for you, even though they traded you for Vlade Diva. Well, you know, I was, at the time, I mean, I was, you know, 17 years old. And, mm -hmm. and I heard that, and I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm going to be doing every day this summer. Mm -hmm. All day that? this summer. Train my butt up. Mm -hmm. You know, because when I hear stuff like that, I mean, that's just automatically just telling me you can't do something. You can't, you know, we don't need you. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Use everything as motivation. <laughs> this one is the representation of the Black Mamba. If you remember in the All-Star game when D-Wade elbowed him by mistake and his nose started bleeding, I'm like, man, he don't want to see Kobe next game, bro. I think they played a couple of days later. Masked Mamba gave him 33 and uh, destroyed him, destroyed Miami. Kobe always played with that chip. That's why I never, I thought it was impossible for us to lose 2010, regardless how bad he played in game seven. I'm like, Kobe Bryant is not going to lose two years in a row to the Boston Celtics. Like, it's just not going to happen. You know, he, he just has that 
the mental edge and everything is just motivation. When Shaq, uh, when Shaq did the this, uh, uh, you know how I be last week, Kobe couldn't do without me. That's that, that was, that was wrong. That sparked three finals in a row. You can't trash talk somebody like that. And everything was used as motivation. Absolutely everything. The doubters, when they said he wasn't going to make the playoffs right before his story's Achilles, had one of the best stretches of his career, playing the best basketball of his career. And uh, Vino, that was his nickname, aging like wine. And uh, you can't doubt a person like that, bro. You just can't. Can you assess exactly what went wrong? Was it too many injuries? Was it Shaq's foot at the beginning of the year? Can you begin to assess why you lost this series? No, nah, I mean, you know, we have a million and one excuses that we could go to. The fact of the matter is, we're not going to make any. Uh, they played better than we did in the series. We had opportunities to win it. Didn't go for us. Uh, you know, so we just have to regroup. Like I said, next season starts right now. And, uh, you know, come back next season and play. How much harder will you work in this offseason now to get back to the championship? Uh, I'll push myself to exhaustion. With what you just said, it sounds like you think that if you're going to make it, you're going to make it no matter what. Yeah. And if there's no like, oh, well, things didn't go your way the first year and it ruined the, you know, the trajectory of your career. It's either you have it or you don't. Yeah, that sounds like excuses to me. I mean, you, you got to figure it out. Right. If you really have an obsession to figure it out, you will figure it out. Right. And every puzzle is constructed differently. All right. AI situation when he came into the league was different than mine. Mike's situation in Chicago was different than mine. Right. Everybody has a different puzzle, man. You just got to figure out your own puzzle. And then for my wife, it's, you know, she's as competitive as I am. So she's just like, listen, man, if you're going to be out here training eight hours a day, if you're going to spend nine months out of a year away from your family, you better fucking win the championship. I think it's how do you negotiate with yourself? I think that's the biggest thing is uh, and we talk about the mental side of it, but then like, what does that really mean? Like the thoughts that happen in your mind when you're going through a competitive situation or you're facing a tight deadline, you still don't have the idea yet. You know, what happens inside of here? You talk yourself out of it. Do you say, okay, well, it won't be a big deal if I don't do it or I don't have to get up on a Tuesday morning to go ahead and hit the track. What does this day really mean in the long scheme of things anyways, just one day? Mm -hmm. Like when you have those conversations with yourself, are you able to negotiate your way out of, you know, that little, you know, voice telling you it's not that important, or does that little voice get the best of you? I think that's what separates people who go on to do great things versus people who don't, or people that do great things but in an inconsistent. Zero excuses. Everything that happens happens for a reason. Everything that happens, it shouldn't get an emotion or reaction out of you. It should just, we have a problem, let's figure it out. You know, I have a problem, and find a way to solve it. It's just, it's just what it is. You know what I mean? You see in the interviews, man, Kobe was destroyed after losing to Detroit, after losing to the Spurs, after losing to the Celtics, after losing, like, to Phoenix. He was destroyed. But you figure it out. You move forward. You get better at certain situations. You, you, you know what I'm saying? That's why he was so hard to beat twice or in a seven-game series in his prime because... That man adjusted, moved the pieces around that was necessary because he would always look in the mirror. So it wasn't about making excuses. It was about getting better. I get knocked down. Okay, I got to get back up. What do I need to get better at this, that, or the third? And uh, you move forward. So, you know what I'm saying? This one is, is super important, man. No excuses. Just figure it out. I knew that I was not going to be stopped. You know, so at the age of 18, this was my life, right? So you can't possibly become better than me because you're not spending the time on it that I do. Even if you want to spend the time on it, you can't because you have other things. You have other responsibilities that are taking you away from it. So I already won. A person that just that took no day for granted, you know what I mean? Like maximize his talent. That's extremely important. You can have talent, but if you don't maximize it, if you don't try to you know, study your craft, if your craft isn't the most important thing to you, then I feel like you're shortchanging yourself. And so if they can look at my career and say, you know what, he, he was obsessive about what he did and reached the highest level of his potential, um, I'll, be, I'll be very happy with that. What do you have to have inside to be a great one? 
That's tough. I mean, because everybody is different. You know, everybody's different and manifests itself in different ways. And you know, I think at the core of us all, though, is it's the kind of that competitive drive and you know the obsession about the game. Well, I, I think it's just you know it's just a matter of what's important to you. Mm -hmm. And what's important to you for for whatever reason, you know, I, I felt like. Um, I didn't feel good about myself if I wasn't doing everything I could to be the best version of myself. Mm -hmm. If I felt like I left anything on the table, um, it would eat away at me. I wouldn't be able to look myself in the mirror. Right? So the reason why I can retire now and be completely comfortable about it because I know that I've done everything I could to be the best basketball player I could be. Mm -hmm. um, Obsession. It takes a certain level of craziness, a certain level of <laughs> being insane to get to that level you know what i'm saying um now there are legendary stories out there and how how obsessed kobe was one of my favorite ones was the olympics right a trainer um strength and conditioning training gave him his number and kobe uh the guy was like man kobe you can call me whenever you want kobe's like i'm gonna hold you to that and uh kobe rang him up at three in the morning he's like can you come down here and get some work done whatever and um Right now, Kobe, trainer went down. <laughs> they got work from like 3 to 5 or 3 to, 3 to 6, something like that. And then the trainer's like, I'm going to go upstairs. we got to be back here at 9. So I'll go upstairs. Kobe was like, sounds good. Trainer comes back down and uh, he sees Kobe. Uh, he comes back down at like 10. He sees Kobe just sitting down there, drenched in sweat. You know what I'm saying? Ice in his knees. And like, when did you finish? It's like 10 minutes ago. So you talking about somebody that woke up at three in the morning and finished at nine in the morning. You know what I'm saying? And that's probably the first part of his day. He still had team practices. He still had film work. He still had everything that he was going to do. You talk about a human being that was waking up at three in the morning, training from four to six, resting from seven to eight, then training again from 10 to, you know what I'm saying, from nine to 11, going back home, resting from 12 to one, then training from three to five. Like, you can't beat that man. You, you can't beat that, bro. You know what I'm saying? When you're the hardest worker in the room, it, it's a wrap. And that, that's just what it was. He was obsessed with being the best. And uh, that certain level of, of, of obsession is what separates the, the, the legends from the, from, from the good. You know what I mean? So you have to be obsessed, man. There's just no other way about it. I'm very, very fortunate to be in this position. You're playing the sport you love. I love it. Absolutely love it. Just I want to learn how to become the best basketball player in the world. And if I'm going to learn that, I got to learn from the best. You know, kids go to school to be doctors or lawyers and so forth and so on. And that's where they study. That's the place for them to study. My place to study is from the best. You know, I, was, I think I was born to play, man. I started playing at like two years old. And my father wasn't one of these fathers that was like, you're going to play basketball or, you know, he wasn't one of those guys. It was just kind of, I was just around the game a lot and uh, I gravitated to the ball and I was completely geeking out about like the smell of the ball and like the way it sounds when it hits concrete versus how it hits a parquet floor and like the sound of the nets and the different material of the nets. And, you know, there's certain basketball hoops like in high school gyms and in college gyms, the rim sits slightly above the, the lower part of the backboard. And it was like I was geeking out if I got into a gym which was like the NBA with the lower stanchion of the backboard and the, um, and the hoop were completely parallel with each other. Like, I, like little shit like that would freak me out. Like I, so to answer your question, I was born to do this thing, man. And, and I did it um, nonstop all day long um, from the age of two to when I retired, man. I love playing basketball. There's nothing like it. What is it you love? <sighs> This is the ball when it bounces, the sound that it makes, the smell of the basketball, the nets when you, when you shoot the ball and it goes right through the net. The sneakers as they squeak on the wood. The strategies, uh, the competition, the camaraderie, the fans. Uh, you just go on and on and on. Is it true that when you're in high school you would show up for practice at 5 a.m. and not leave until 7 p.m.? Yeah. Do you think that's because you love basketball or because you're crazy? Both. <laughs> A little bit of both. Now this one right here is the key to happiness. Find what you love and leave everything on the table. I think life 
man, you get sent out here for a specific reason. It's not about, you know what I'm saying, going to university, getting a nine to five and turning 70 and you have no money in the bank and you can't, you know what I'm saying? You wasted all your life working 10 hours a day on a job that you don't like, my G. You know what I'm saying? When you find something that you love, go all out, man. Go down swinging. Leave everything on the table. Don't leave any stone unturned. You know? Like, I had hoop dreams. I fucked myself over by the eighth, eighth lesson, by fearing myself. And uh, I said, I'm going to start hoop on me. I can still do stuff around the game that I love. I still want to master this game. And I'm going to document that come, that you know that comeback. But it's what I love, bro. You know what I mean? If if I'm not watching basketball, I'm editing basketball. If I'm not editing basketball, I'm playing basketball. If I'm not playing, I'm training. If I'm not training, I'm playing 2K. If I'm not playing 2K, I'm watching. If I'm not watching it or none of that, I'm talking about it. Like, that's my life. So I was brought to this planet to do something around the game that I love. It's It's just what it is. Now it's just about finding the lions that are in the field too. And they can teach you how to hunt and and uh move forward but find what you love and leave everything on the table bro life is too short and uh man this video could have been three hours long and me talking so much more and how he made me feel as a man you know what i'm saying that's my idol that's my mentor but i wanted a video where what it was watchable where you guys could watch it what you guys could hear from him and then you guys could hear from me on how that particular lesson impacted me as a man and uh he taught me what basketball was, dude. I would have never played if it wasn't for Kobe. So um, I'm going to continue to represent. I'm always going to do a video on this day. I'm always going to do a video on his birthday. I'm always going to do a video on 224 to show love to Gigi and Kobe. Um, my profile picture on Instagram is, is going to be them for God knows how long. Probably forever because I'm forever grateful for everything he did for me. You know what I'm saying? One of my dreams was to meet him, to shake his hand and be like, man, look what you did to my life, for my life without knowing. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got to feed my family. I got to change my life. I got to live my dream because everything that you taught me. And uh, this this shit will never feel real. You know, I'll, I'll never be able to completely kind of understand that he's not here. But um, his impact was so much greater than millions of people wished. He lived a full life, man. You know, amazing family, and uh, he didn't leave anything unturned, brother. Whatever he did, he did to the max of his abilities, and you can't, you can't ask, to, you know, what I'm saying to live a better way. So, um, to Vanessa, to the girls, um, I just want to say thank you for being so strong, for showing that Mamba mentality as well, and uh, my prayers are with you guys always, man. Thank you guys for living, for living them, you know what I'm saying? For living through the, for, for us seeing them through you guys. And um, I don't know much, what, what else can I say, but um, Mamba out.